and welcome to this edition of ACAP Today for the week of February 8th, 2021. I'm Jason Parent with the Aroostook County Action Program. On this week's program, we're going to sit down and talk with Aaron Benson, who oversees both our workforce development and our home energy assistance programs here at the, at the agency. We're going to talk with Aaron about a special day coming up uh, on February 11th, so later this week, where individuals who haven't applied for HEAP before, who have and maybe got declined or haven't finished the process, can call in. Uh, on a special day and uh, get their applications taken directly at that point. We're going to talk with Aaron about that in just a little bit, but before we get to that, as we do at every point at the start of each uh, ACAP Today broadcast, we are going to first share with you the news and information that you can use for this week of February 8th, 2021. We start with uh, sharing with you again, as we have each week, that our offices remain closed to the public because of the increased uh, COVID cases in Aroostook County. We are still very accessible to you, though, by phone, online, or even if you come to one of our offices, either the one in Holton, uh, Presque Isle, or Fort Kent, uh, in Presque Isle and in Holton, you'll see the telephone number on a banner outside of the facility to call, and somebody from inside the facility can assist you, whether that's helping to get paperwork that you might be dropping off, or with whatever needs that you have, we'll work with you uh, to take care of those uh, from outside of our building. So please do uh, connect with us in the ways that we are available to connect with, the many ways that we are available to connect with you. I wish I'd have uh, better news for you on this, but it is looking like the COVID-19 emergency rental assistance uh, update is still status quo. We are working very diligently with our friends at Maine Housing and Community Action Agencies across the state to get this next program off the ground, and it will be able to cover rent um, in arrears that may not have been covered all the way back to April 2020, so please do be patient. Uh, and then once we do get the program off the ground, we ask for your patience again, because we anticipate a flood of, of applicants uh, very early on in the days, but we are working toward it and we promise um, that the program will work well uh, once we are able to get it off the ground. The uh, special enrollment period that was announced by the Biden administration uh, for individuals and families who are looking for marketplace health insurance coverage in response to the COVID-19 public health emergency uh, will open up uh, later, uh, actually early next week, February 15th, uh, and it will run through the 15th of May, so a two-month application period or a few-month application period, I should say. Um, we do have assistance that's available here. Uh, Stan Targonski is our local health insurance marketplace navigator here at the agency. He's certainly available if you'd like to connect with him prior to the February 15th date. And obviously he'll be available to work with folks between February 15th and May 15th uh, as they try to navigate health insurance on that site. Stan is also able to determine presumptively if you are eligible for main care. So please do connect with Stan if you think that that might be a possibility for your household. We also are pleased to announce that we are engaging in what are called community action, uh, part, community action conversations with our partners at Northern Light AR Gould Hospital. Uh, this should result in patients uh, at the hospital from the primary care setting and other specialty clinics, uh, seeing more referrals to services that we might be able to offer here at the Arusta County Action Program. So we're working very closely with providers at AR Gould and other hospital providers, but certainly in this program with AR Gould. Um, to make sure that they are fully aware of the programs and services that we offer as they meet with their patients and are able to direct them accordingly. Another project that we're doing in partnership with AR Gould uh, Northern Light Health is the Winter Challenge Bingo. Uh, we invite folks, this is through our Let's Go 5210 program um, that's part of the ACAP umbrella, but also in partnership, as I mentioned, with Northern Light Health AR Gould Hospital. Bingo cards for this are available on ACAP's website, as you can see there. You can also contact Don Roberts at uh, D. Roberts at Northern Light. Uh, org. If you would like a card printed and sent to you, there is a prize of $50 uh, to uh, bike, board, and ski that uh, folks can be entered into by completing a successful bingo. It's a really neat card and it uh, talks about a number of activities that you can engage in this winter. And if you make a bingo, any kind of bingo, um, then you can submit your card and be entered into the drawing. So it's a great way to help you stay active. If you have any questions or want to send photos of you doing so, send them to R. Bragdon, Renee Bragdon at acap-me.org or Don Roberts as at the email address that's on your screen and that we talked about earlier. 
The uh, Presque Isle Community Blood Drive hosted by the American Red Cross is happening next week uh, here in Presque Isle on Tuesday, February 16th. Uh, and then again on Tuesday, April 20th. So there's a couple coming up in the next few months that you might want to take advantage of. We're encouraging our ACAP staff here to certainly uh, help donate blood at this time as the need is high. Uh, but please uh, do consider visiting redcrossblood.org uh, to register uh, for this blood drive uh, to give blood on either the 16th of February or 20th of April. And there will be other clinics in the Roostick County and we'll pass that information along to you as we are aware. The Young Workers Academy uh, is starting up for their second session. They did their inaugural session late last year, late 2020, and they're going to be starting up again next week on the 16th of February, Tuesday the 16th of February, and it will run all the way through April 8th. This is a great opportunity for youth ages 16 through 24. There's some slots left, so please consider uh, enrolling your youth, or if you are a, an individual between 16 and 24, calling us for more information and signing up for the next class. It's an eight-week academy. It will be held on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You'll learn about employability skills, find out how to manage money, meet employers who are hiring, but you'll also earn a salary through a work experience over that period of time with the hopes that the employer might consider holding on to that employee at the end of successful completion. But certainly work skills will be built regardless of what happens at the end of the Young Workers Academy. I encourage you to reach out to us. Mary Duff and Sophia Kraus are leading the effort, but just ask for workforce development and we'll make sure you're connected into the program. The Aroostook Cash Coalition, sponsored by the County Federal Credit Union, is pleased to announce that they're going virtual this year to continue to provide the free tax preparation and financial checkups for low to middle income households. This is if you're earning less than $57,000 a year. There will be, as I mentioned, no appointments in person. They're going virtual due to COVID-19. It's a scan and go virtual tax preparation. There are appointments scheduled for that to drop your documents by um, and a time for you to come back and review uh, and do an e-filing for that. Uh, they will do an e-filing for that. Um, if you do meet the income guidelines and receive a tax statement, uh, for 2020 for any income that you've received, contact the United Way of Aroostook at 764-5197. Uh, and you can go to County Federal Credit Union or countyfcu.org for information on the financial resources uh, and what documents you wanna scan and bring. But I'll call our partners at United Way if you have any questions on this program. The COVID-19 vaccination effort is underway here in Maine and we understand that a lot of folks are frustrated. It is very difficult. There aren't um, a lot of vaccines being allocated to the states at this point. Our healthcare providers locally are doing a phenomenal job of communicating out to their patients. We encourage you to communicate with your healthcare provider, especially at this point if you are age 70 or older, uh, as this is phase 1B that's actively happening. So please do connect with your local healthcare provider. You can also go on to the uh, CDC main.gov COVID-19 vaccine site. Uh, the address is there on your screen if you're looking for more information. We are also offering free face cloth uh, masks available at our offices. Some folks are suggesting double masking is a good idea in this time. If you are struggling to have access to masks or don't have enough, we are offering free cloth face masks that were commercially produced um, and are available, no questions asked. We will give you what you need. Uh, stop by either our Presque Isle office near Walmart, Holton office or Fort Kent location uh, in the industrial park there. And we will get a mask out to you. Just dial the number um, or, or ring the video doorbell at the door and we will get a mask out to you. Or if you uh, are in need and can't get to us, give us a call and we'll mail them out to you at our 764-3721 number. The community closet is located outside of our facility here at ACAP at 771 Main Street in Presque Isle, a Presque Isle location. It's a give what you can, take what you need philosophy. It's open 24 seven and it provides free clothing to individuals. If you have clothes that you'd like to drop off, you can drop them off at any time at the community cupboard or if we're open, you can leave them by our door and we'll get the uh, materials from you. And you can likewise for folks in need of clothing, you can pick them up and you can browse the shelves at any time again 24 seven in that area just outside of the entrance of our office location near Walmart in Presque Isle. 
The uh, community cupboard, which is located right near it, is not the only one in Aroostook County, however. Um, if you are in need of food assistance, we encourage you to call us. We have an Aroostook County food resource guide that we can get over to you uh, to connect with your local community cupboard. There are several across Aroostook County from the valley in the north to southern Aroostook uh, where they are located. We are very pleased to say thank you to our sponsors of the month for the community cupboard outside of our 771 Main Street facility. Uh, that includes a conglomerate of uh, food suppliers in Aroostook County and grocery stores from Aroostook Foods to the Ashland Food Mart, Caribou Hannaford, Graves Supermarkets and Parity Shop and Save. We thank you profoundly for your contributions as our sponsors of the month for this month's community cupboard here at ACAP 771 Main Street location. If you are in need of assistance outside of food or even with food, you can also connect with our navigator team. Uh, please do give us a call, 764-3721. Especially if you are uncertain what services are available for you out there or how to navigate or connect with them, this is what our navigators are here for. We encourage you to reach out to us and connect with a navigator. We'll connect you with a navigator uh, and they'll help you uh, on your search uh, and maybe offer services or make you aware of services you didn't even know were available. Uh, speaking of a service that is available to folks, especially those looking to retool or get into the workforce uh, or re-engage in the workforce, a wonderful opportunity through Maine's Workforce Collaborative to offer uh, programs that include interviewing tips and tricks, making career choices, resume and cover letter development, job preparation and retention, much more. Uh, these are all offered virtually and you can give us a call, give our workforce development team a call and we will connect you uh, with these sessions uh, uh, and the schedule of them. Some of them are taught by ACAP folks, others are taught by some of our downstate partners uh, that work in workforce development. We also want to make you aware that the uh, ACAP offers a uh, program that will help your business or organization develop a new or revise your existing tobacco policies. Uh, this is something that we do free of charge and for businesses and organizations that participate and successfully complete and develop new or revised policies. We do offer a free signage such as what you're seeing here on the screen uh, for uh, those companies. So please do consider uh, if you're in need of upgrading or updating your tobacco policy at your workplace, giving us a call and availing yourself of this free service. Another free service we offer regarding tobacco products is um, the smoking cessation program that is offered through uh, Elaine Sipe in partnership uh, with the Maine Cancer Foundation. Uh, these are opportunities for you to engage with us for quit kits, uh, virtual meetings, help making a quit date plan and connecting through this program to free nicotine replacement therapies. Contact Elaine Sipe if you're considering quitting or even want to just learn about what the process would be like. Her telephone number and email address are there on your screen and we encourage you uh, to reach out to Elaine. She's very friendly and she'll be glad to help you uh, in your quit journey. And lastly, as we shared with you last week with our guest Heidi Ratcliffe, we are currently uh, providing uh, homeless services through a wellness shelter at a local hotel. Uh, it's a temporary hope and prosperity wellness shelter for individuals experiencing homelessness in partnership with our friends at Maine Housing. Um, so if you are in need or know of someone who's in need of homeless services, please do contact Homeless Services of Aroostook and they will make the referral accordingly. Uh, we are housing individuals who are awaiting COVID tests to await placement in the shelter and also serving as an overflow uh, for Homeless Services of Aroostook Sister Mary O'Donnell Shelter. So please do contact uh, Homeless Services of Aroostook if you need help with this particular service. You can also uh, contact us if you want some more information and we will help you get connected. And that's this week's news and information that you can use. And we are joined now by Erin Benson, who uh, coordinates both our energy programs uh, and our housing programs, our, sorry, our workforce programs. We could give you housing as well, Erin, I'm sure you can no. handle it. <laughs> <laughs> But it is great to welcome you back to the program. And we are talking heating this time. Um, yes. We've spoken both heating and uh, workforce in the past with you. So we're going to focus on heating in this one. And there's something very special happening on the 10th of February, an opportunity for community members who may not be aware of the program or maybe and maybe haven't applied in a while to reconnect with us. So let's talk about this. What is it? Warm it up call in event. Right. Uh, February 10th. 
So we've set aside this day, we've cleared our books of all appointments. And um, what we really wanna do is encourage people to, if they have questions about it, to call in and ask us. And if we can do an application with them on the spot, we will do that. We have uh, our intake specialists. I, I think they're gonna be three or four of uh, them around. And so we can just be taking applications all day or, or answering questions. You know, I feel like I have talked till I'm blue in the face about all of this, but it amazes me that there are still people out there that don't know that they can get this kind of support. They don't know that this kind of support is available and they think it's not available for them. And they, you know, they, um, they haven't looked at the guidelines in a while or if ever. And, um, you know, usually when I talk with people and I, I, I you know, list out um, what the income levels are, they're surprised that they, uh, would be eligible. And so we know, Jason, that um, there are so many people out there who are eligible who have not applied. And we're just trying to figure out how we can connect with them because we want to reach out. We want to support people. Uh, it, it gets, it's very cold in this area and it's very expensive to, um, you know, heat your home uh, throughout the winter months. And we want to be a source for people, a source to, you know, of assistance. And we cannot, uh, we cannot do it without people, you know, uh, going through the application process. So um, this day was uh, set aside as, as kind of a, um, a specialized day to say, you know, if you've, if you've never had it, if you are wondering if you are eligible for it, if you, Think you are and want to do an application on the spot um, we're right there uh, ready and willing to help and just to put it in context i was in a meeting a virtual meeting with colleagues this morning and our colleague from the farthest uh, county south indicated in in one of the conversation topics that only in statewide in maine only 25 percent of all heap eligible households, this is an estimate, are actually applying for and receiving the benefit in the state. And I don't know that the number is that high here in Aroostook County, but still, even if there are, even if we're at 50% or at 60% here in Aroostook County, I can't think of how many people are struggling unnecessarily um, in terms of trying to make decisions about the temperature they're going to heat their home for, or whether they're going to buy, you know, some extra groceries to, to help to help feed themselves and their family. It's just staggering to think about that. And um, I think that that's probably the thing that we need to help people understand the most is that maybe they've tried and applied before, but things have, have changed within the program, haven't they? they? They've changed significantly. Last year, last, last heating season was the, the biggest change that's ever happened. The income levels, um, went way higher than they've been in the past. So so there may have been people 10 years ago or five years ago or three years ago that applied and were denied. And, and once you're denied, you think, oh, that's not for me and it will never be for me. Well, uh, you know, last season, they uh, raised the guidelines significantly. And in, in some cases, like for a household of one, it was raised 40%. And so mm -hmm. I just feel like there are so many people out there. And I talk to a lot of people who call in and, you know, people, older people who tell me that they're keeping their, you know, their house at 62 degrees. And, you know, being a, a, a Floridian uh, <laughs> from the start, I can't imagine that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, mine probably is at 70 or something like that. But, you know, people who are um, living unnecessarily in a hardship situation. And, and granted, you know, HEAP isn't meant to, to cover somebody's entire heating costs. It's, you know, home energy assistance program. So it's meant to assist, but couldn't we all use a little assistance? And, you know, we tend to live on the income that we have, but, you know, there are some people that are really, really struggling and this could be such a bonus. Uh, so I just, I, you know, and, if you think that you're not eligible, start looking in your circle. Who's who in your family? Who you know? Your parents, your your children, your adult children, um, your neighbors. One time we had this uh, gentleman call and he wanted to make an appointment for his neighbor because he knew that she was very cold and didn't have a, appropriate heat. And I thought, great, 
how wonderful that he's paying attention to, you know, uh, his neighbors. And, you know, there are, there are people who have advocates for them, that they, you know, that uh, children who take care of their parents, their elderly parents, but, you know, there are a lot of people who don't have those advocates. So if, if you're listening to this and you think, oh, well, you know, I'm, I make too much money, who do you know that would be eligible? And, and to encourage them to apply. There are a lot, this is a very proud state and this is a very proud county. And I, I'm not going to ask for help. I don't need help. I'll be stoic and you know, live on what I make. Um, you know, if you could just encourage people uh, to uh, put that stoicism aside and, 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 try and, and get the help. That they that they need and that they deserve. There's so many, especially some of the older people that I, I speak with. You know, I say think of how many people that you've helped over your lifetime, and now it's our turn to help you. So don't you know, don't let that be an impediment. Um, I, I just I don't know how else to say it. Uh, what, there are more people out there that we can serve, and and that's what we want to do. And I think one of the other misconceptions that you've faced and, and even addressed with, with individuals who have called is that if, gosh, if I apply and I receive assistance, I may keep it from a family with young children or there's a, you know, I, I'm going to take it away from somebody else if I access it. And that's not the case. No, you're not taking it away from anyone. If people are eligible, they receive it. Nobody sits there and says, well, yes to her and no to her. And, you know, it's if you're eligible, you receive it. So you're not taking anything away from anybody else. I do hear that a lot. <laughs> the other thing is that, you know, you indicated and we do have the income guidelines available on our website, but um, the income guidelines aren't the final on their own. There are some exceptions in terms of potential de deductions. Right. That get you to that level, correct? Right, sure. So we look at the household income. So, how, you know, how many people are in the household and what's the income level from all members of the household? And then if you're over income, we can look at medical uh, payments for deductions. I mean, you know, the premiums that you pay on your insurance, uh, what you pay for, uh, and it has to be obviously paid within the months that we look back. Um, but, you know, did you get eyeglasses? Did you go to the dentist and have to pay something? Co-pays, medication. I mean, when people start thinking about the money that they spend, um, you know, in the medical realm, that adds up. And, you know, we have to have the documents. We have to have the proof, uh, the paid bill. Um, but those can add up rather quickly. And especially for some people who you know, have some pretty significant illnesses that, you know, or pretty significant um, medicines that they're on. So that can be very expensive. And all of that can um, help reduce that overall income status and, and get you under the threshold. Oh, I know some of our neighbors out there must be thinking and maybe hearing this and saying, gosh, you know, it's going to be mid-February here shortly, and I've already, you know, negotiated my contract with my fuel vendor for the year, and I'm making my payments, and I'm going to be all set. Maybe I'll think about this or and, and consider doing it, or I'll call next summer or, or fall when it starts to get cold again, but this is a good time to do this, right? <laughs> Don't wait. Yes, uh, I would strongly encourage people to apply now because it there it is a process. You know, some people call and they think they're going to get something that day or the next day. It it's a process. We take information, and because of COVID, we're doing everything over the phone. And we and over the phone, we print it out, we mail it. You have to mail it back. So the process is slow because of the mail. Um, but. But there is a process. I mean, the, you have to gather documents and then we have to certify people. I mean, we've, we've uh, processed over 5,000 applications so far and um, it, it takes a while. And so by the, from the time that you make the appointment to the time that you actually receive the benefit, it might be two months. And, and people are thinking, oh, well, the heating season is over. You know, I won't need heat in April or May or June. Well, that stays on your account and you have 18 months to use it. And so for the people who are getting a benefit in May, they'll be all set for when the cold weather starts in October. And I can't think of a greater gift. And so I, I know that a lot of people just, what is my immediate need? It's cold now, I need heat now. You know, in the summer, I'm putting money away for my uh, 
clothing for my children for you know going back to school i mean what is the immediate need right now if if people could think that this is an opportunity to plan ahead to to get ahead of the game for you know the heating season that will begin you know september october uh, of next year it will be such a benefit they won't have to worry uh, they'll they'll have already made the plan right now so really please do not wait and encourage again if if people seeing this if they don't feel they're eligible encourage others and and use that argument when somebody says well i'm you know i don't need heat in you know uh, may or june put it on your account and you'll be set for the next heating season and you never know. I mean, you are a mom, Erin, and you know that you've gotten, in addition to flowers for Mother's Day before, six inches of snow as well. So it does, sometimes you do need to turn the thermostat up in May. So it might be beneficial for this year. We got a foot of snow. I don't know if it was last May or the May before on Memorial Day. A mm -hmm. foot of snow. I have it, a picture of it, and it's on my phone. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so the other thing is not only will applying now, um, get you a benefit if you are eligible that will stay on your fuel vendor account but it'll also get you into the process so that we will actually reach out to you each year and schedule right. an appointment with you each year for further assistance and follow-up right that's how it works anybody who has who has applied and received a benefit they are automatically given uh, an appointment for the following season um for some people uh you know they they may not have um they may not have sent their uh, their information in. We have to void several applications because people do not send their documents back to us. So they're, and some people are denied because they're over income or they have, they're missing a document or whatever. Um, so they are not scheduled. And so if you're one of those people, you would have to call again and schedule for an appointment. But anybody who receives a benefit, who's applied and receives a benefit, they're automatically given an appointment for the following season. Now, um, in addition to this program, because this program is what we call kind of a gateway program, applying for and being eligible for the Home Energy Assistance Program also opens uh, individuals and families up to other potential programs within the CAP agency and that main housing supports. Uh, I know that you don't run those programs. I kind of credited you with that no, earlier, but- No, but I can, I can, I can yeah. speak to them a I little know you bit. Can. <laughs> As long as you don't tell Randy that I've done it. I, I'm sure he will not begrudge you being on this program and taking that slot away from him. <laughs> you know, I tell you, that is, I have to say that that is one of the things that I so admire about this agency uh, and have been so impressed uh, having worked here um, is how many programs are offered under one roof and how when you're talking with someone um, like, so many people that I've talked to for keep who say they're out of work and I immediately say oh are you looking for work are can, we have this wonderful workforce development program that can help you or somebody who you know complains about their house uh being like a sieve it you know it doesn't hold heat because um they need weatherization we've got a weatherization program and that's through housing and that's one of the programs that you qualify for if you receive a heat benefit. And there are other programs like CHIP uh, that helps with replacement of, um, you know, if for some reason your uh, furnace stops working, um, you could potentially be eligible for that program, you know, but you have to be eligible for heat first. So there are a lot of things that it HEAP opens the door for. Another one, people who live in subsidized housing with heat included you would think oh you know well this isn't this program isn't for them well in essence it is it's not that they get money for for heat because obviously they don't need it it's it's part of their subsidy subsidy um but it they get a, a check for 21 dollars, and it helps them maintain a, a, a high level of uh, food stamps and so there are all kinds of programs that are tied into this one LIHEAP program. So, you know, for so many reasons, people should just um, look at the guidelines, they should call us, they should ask us questions. Um, and, and, you know, we can, we can certainly, if they have housing questions, I would certainly want the folks in housing to, you know, to speak with them to, so they get the, you know, all the facts and the correct facts. But, you know, it's, if you want to start with us, 
we can point you in the direction and just to, to so many uh, great programs. Yes, and I, I think one of um, the most common things that I hear um, as it relates to HEAP, um, and I just, you know, happened to be at the coming into the entrance of our building the other day and um, our agency receptionist was on the phone with an individual who was calling to inquire about uh, the home energy assistance program. Um, and I could, I could hear her speaking in the background about how her husband who had passed had taken care of everything for years and she didn't really, you know, know about, you know, the opportunities that were out there. She just knew he took care of things and was, was just calling to inquire. And I think that's what we're looking for on this day on the 10th. I mean, people can do that on any day, but on the sure. 10th, we're really hoping that people who, you know, there's not a, there's not a bad question or a stupid question to ask. We're here. Um, no. and that's what we want people to know. No, you know, um, I, like I said, we, this, there are proud people here and, um, and so I think sometimes it's hard to ask, um, but I, I tell you, I am constantly impressed with the staff uh, in this department, well, across the agency, but particularly this department, <laughs> and uh, the, their level of respect and kindness. And, you know, sometimes people who call are uh, in a distress mode and uh, they're not um, always as pleasant. <laughs> they could be, but because they're, they're distressed. Um, but you know, the staff here, they always maintain a level of respect as we should. And, and no question is, um, is too, you know, too mundane. Um, it just, it, this is an opportunity for people to uh, get all of their questions answered. And, and if for people who've never thought about calling, uh, you know, that's what we wanted this day to be for, to, to get in everybody's mind, oh, just, just do it, just call. See, see if you're eligible um, and, and don't be afraid. And so we're really hoping that, um, that, that people will get the message and that they will call us or that they will encourage others you know, that, that are in their circle, that are in their sphere uh, to call as well. So let's recap you folks uh, about this day, Erin. So tell me about, uh warm it up call an event sure so we're going to be here from nine to four so people can give us a call we can answer questions if they have questions if uh, we can do an application on the spot for them we will absolutely do it uh, it usually takes um, 15 to 20 minutes to actually go through the list of questions and then we'll print out documents and mail them to you and um, you know you'll there'll be a process behind it um, but uh, it, it would be a great opportunity for somebody who has never applied or for someone um, who may have applied, you know, five years ago and they haven't since. And also, too, for people who have been affected by COVID and who, you know, are struggling, who have never had to struggle before. And this is an opportunity for them to get that kind of assistance. And, and that's really important. You know, a lot of people uh, have lost their jobs and or have had their hours reduced. And so this is an opportunity that they could get some support that they need too. So that's, that's an important uh, uh, thing to think about as well. And it's for everything from a senior citizen to a family with young children to a single individual. It's really, it, you, let us help you talk, talk you through uh, what the options are for you. Whether you own your home, whether you rent, whether you're a boarder, even if your heat is included in your rent, you're still actually paying for heat. You're just doing it through your rent. So we can, you know, run a calculation. It's, um, you know, there are just so, so many people that could be eligible and, and they just aren't taking advantage. Well, hopefully on February 10th, many of you out there will take our advice and give us a call. Our friendly staff, as Erin pointed out, will be standing by uh, that Thank day. <laughs> they are available at any time if you'd like to call um, us, but on the 10th, we're reserving that day for our staff to be dedicated to this task uh, and to take your calls and hopefully uh, complete some applications right on the spot that day. So thank you, Erin, so much for joining me today. And uh, I look forward to hearing about the successful day on February 10th. I look forward to reporting it to you. <laughs> <laughs> well,
Well, before we leave you today, we want to remind you that you are uh, open to connect with us on not only Home Energy Assistance Program matters, but on any other questions that you might have, including if you want to connect with our team of navigators, as I spoke about earlier in the news segment. Um, we are uh, here for you uh, and we are available to help you, even if you don't know what programs you might be eligible for or what programs are out there. Uh, this time, we encourage you to connect with us. You can do it by phone. The phone number is there. You can do it at info at acap-me.org. That's our general inquiry email. And we'll make sure the right person gets a hold of your question. You can check out our uh, online website at acap-me.org, where there's a lot of information there, including the income guidelines that we spoke about with Aaron earlier. You can follow us on social media. Um, Sherry and our team in communications and others are always posting information, some very good information about the new and latest happenings here at ACAP. We're also available on YouTube. We have our YouTube channel where you can see past broadcasts of ACAP today and also available on Twitter for you. So if you'd like to connect with us in any of those ways, we'd certainly love to connect with you. And finally, we leave you with our snapshot of the week. This week, we give a heads up salute to our super IT support guy, Dave Natto, who has helped us navigate COVID in ways that, well, you can only imagine given that we've sent so many employees to work from home and the like. Uh, Dave does definitely work tirelessly to support the entire ACAP team and to keep us connected. And for that, we thank him. Uh, thank you, Dave. And thank you to all of our 170 ACAP team members across Aroostook County for all they do every day uh, to help serve this community. And we encourage you to connect with us to see how we can help serve you. That's it for this week. We'll be back with another edition of ACAP Today next week, where we'll have another great conversation about another one of our programs. We'll talk to you then. Have a great week, everyone.